The mid-size pickup truck segment is traditionally one of the most behind the times in all of automotive. But despite this, people love their trucks. They buy them and hold onto them for years, putting on thousands of miles in the process. The Nissan Frontier is a perfect example of this. The last generation model soldiered on from 2005 all the way until this year. Luckily, there's a new Frontier, and it's quite different than the one that came before it. And this is our first opportunity to get behind the wheel and see what it's all about. Now, breaking down the design just a little bit further, there's obviously a whole lot that's new here, but at the same time, there's a few things that didn't change. This truck has the same wheelbase as before. It's still 126 inches. It actually shares a frame with the previous Gen Frontier as well. All right, let's go rapid fire on the exterior design. Things I love and things I don't like as much. Now remember, all of this is specific to the Pro 4X because that's the truck that we're with. The lower trims do look a lot different than this truck. And that starts with right here. You notice this is bright red. All of the Pro 4X versions are going to have these lava red accents on the truck. It's on the badge up front, the tow hooks underneath, and there's a graphic on the rear fender. If you like it, that's great. To me, I think it clashes a little bit with the paint job. It looks slightly better with the more muted tones, but with this color in particular, there's a lot going on. While we're talking about the color, tactical green, big ol' hell yeah. It looks phenomenal, and it's one of the few colors you can get on the front here that really makes the truck stand out. Quick talking about the headlights here. That's Nissan's sort of corporate lighting signature on the top and the bottom. And on this particular truck, you get full LED head and LED tail lights as well. Going over to the wheels. These are 17 inch beadlock capable wheels. Again, specific to this trim level. And they look super aggressive. They look great. But again, you do get this little red accent down here. Take it or leave it. The fender flares are also specific to 4X. They do a great job to make things look uh, sort of more beefed up and more aggressive overall. And that brings us now to the bed. Now at the back of the truck, the first thing I'll mention is, pardon our dust. This is actually a much darker piece, but as you can see, there's lots of dust on this thing. We've already had it out on the trails, but that's a good time for me to remind you, stay tuned. We're gonna put it through its paces in just a little bit. In terms of the style here, we have another red badge which stands right out in the middle. And of course, it wouldn't be a modern truck if we didn't have a giant word mark stamped in the tailgate. Overall, looks pretty good though. What's new back here? We have a damped tailgate for the first time, which is a nice feature. And then in this particular version, we have sliding hooks for the bed, which makes things nice and versatile. And we have a nice 120 volt power outlet, which you can use to power tools and that sort of thing. There are also two LED lights mounted in the bed. And this one additionally has some spray in bed liner that you can actually get straight from the factory. This is the five foot bed. There is a six foot option on different trim levels. And overall, this truck can do up to 1600 pounds of payload. Before we dive into the tech, let's talk about the cab for a second here. Uh, the order of the day is black plastic. It is everywhere. We don't have nice wood grain across the dash, any of that stuff. That is all for the full-size trucks. But for as sort of Spartan as it is, it's nice. Things are comfortable where you want them to be. For example, Nissan Zero Gravity Seat. Not a ton of support left or right, but I gotta say, they are comfortable as all hell. You do have two-way adjustability that's automatic here. No lumbar support, which we could use. We do have the upgraded leather package in this particular truck. If you opt for the cloth, which is also nice, you do get more of that lava red going on. It's sort of in the inserts here, it's on the dash. So if you want a more muted interior, go for the upgraded leather. It'll be worth your time. And a few niceties on top of that as well in this Pro 4X. We have a moonroof overhead. We actually have a heated steering wheel, super luxurious, and a 10 speaker Fender audio system. So let's focus in on the center stack now because that is really the focal point of this new interior. The infotainment, this is a nine inch display, which is the upgraded version in this truck. Believe it or not, it's the biggest you can do in the entire segment. It's kind of surprising, you know, we're so used now to 12 inch displays and just screens everywhere in the vehicles, but this is what we're working with. Uh, every Frontier is going to come standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but they're not wireless connections. It's a bit surprising considering the Rogue, Pathfinder, plenty of other Nissans have those wireless connections. They said it could come at some point down the line in the Frontier, but for now you're stuck with the wires. Now in terms of working with the display itself, not really my favorite. It's a bit laggy going back and forth, and I've always found that in Nissans, the menus are a bit confusing with how it's laid out. But if you keep your phone hooked up, it kind of remedies most of those issues. 
The rest of the center stack is really nicely laid out and very simple to work with. We have these big physical dials for the dual zone climate control, heated steering wheel down here. And I love that they include both USB-A and USB-C ports to accommodate all of your devices. And speaking of, there's also a nifty wireless charger to throw your phone right down. And you know what? Things are not all that bad in the back seat as well. On the bigger portion of the seat, we actually have some storage underneath. Uh, in this particular truck, we have an adventure medic kit, whatever that is. But if you don't have those, you can, you know, fit some things back here for a weekend away. Drop that back down and let's climb inside. The first thing you notice is the seats are definitely pretty upright and there's no room to recline. But you know what? That's sort of what you can expect with a truck of this size. Where they make up for it is in terms of storage space and other comfortable things. Uh, if you happen to have a Nissan branded water bottle by chance, it'll fit in any of the cup holders back here. There's actually eight throughout the entire interior and they all fit huge water bottles, which is clever thinking. Uh, we do have a 110 outlet for your phone to charge and then a nice mix of USB-A and USB-C ports as well. Getting behind the wheel of the 2022 Nissan Frontier really feels like a long time coming. That last truck was on the road for 15, 16 years, something like that. And Nissan worked hard to redo this driving experience from the ground up. And that really splits into two main things. The powertrain is greatly improved and the quality of the ride and refining it. Starting with the powertrain, it's technically a carryover unit. It's a naturally aspirated 3.8 liter V6. It's good for 310 horsepower and 281 pound-feet of torque. That 310 figure, Nissan is shouting from the mountaintops as best in class. And it is, it beats out the Tacoma, it beats out the Ranger and things like that. So that engine will come standard regardless of trim that you get. Now paired to that V6 is a new nine speed automatic transmission, which is a huge step forward over the previous gen trucks five speed. That's how old it was. You're getting four additional gears. In practice, the two work pretty well. We're going up a little incline right now. You definitely have to get your foot in it to get this thing moving, which is no surprise because there is no turbocharger, but it has a nice, easy to work with linear power band. And I have to say through half a day, almost a full day of driving right now, there hasn't been a moment where I've adamantly wanted more power. It does just fine. It's a gritty V6. <laughs> There's not too much to like there. You'll definitely hear it uh, when you're towing and when you're making the engine work hard, but I'm liking what I'm feeling right now with the powertrain so far. Speaking of towing, the truck can do 6,720 pounds in its top form. For those of you keeping score, that's slightly better than the best version of the Tacoma, which maxes out at about 6,400 pounds. Nissan chose to stick with a hydraulic steering rack, and the reasoning for that was pretty simple. They said mid-sized truck buyers want to feel uh, a more gritty, a more real steering feel. Uh, you do give up some of the more modern things that you get with an electric steering rack, and that means no active lane keeping assist. You're not gonna get a fully dialed in cruise control where the truck is staying in its lane and all that kind of jazz. But the trade-off is you do get something that feels more visceral on the road, which for most truck buyers is probably what they want to begin with. Personally, I think we're at the point where they can tune an electric steering rack to feel just like hydraulic and they probably should have gone with that. But I guess it's not off the table going forward as the Frontier will stay around for probably years to come with this generation. Now this Pro 4X version does have Bill Steen dampers, and we'll talk about that more in a bit when we do the off-road section. These are the most aggressive all-terrain tires too, and there's not a lot of bad manners going on with on-road driving. That also has to do with what Nissan did in refining uh, how loud this truck is on the road. They put in new hydraulic cab mounts which reduce vibrations by up to 80%, they say, over the previous gen truck, which is a huge improvement. They also put more aggressive sealing in the doors, they laminated the front glass, and they actually took a look at these hand-cooked tires as well, and even reduced the noise that you get out of those. Overall, on the highway and on slower roads like this, it's very impressive how well they dialed in uh, and managed the noise coming into the cabin. Looking at fuel economy, the Frontier is competitive with the segment, but it's not a standout favorite. Good news is there's only a one mile per gallon penalty for opting uh, for four wheel drive with the truck and combined. This will do 19 miles combined and the two wheel drive version will do 20 miles combined. 
We're in a Pro 4X right now, which is the fully loaded truck, including four wheel drive, but Nissan is doing a Pro X version, which has all the bits that this truck has sans four wheels. So you can keep rear wheel drive if you're in a market where you don't feel like you need power going to all four. When the pavement stops and the dirt starts, the Frontier remains a very capable machine. Modern off-roaders are packed with all sorts of electronic aids and driving modes, but the Frontier could not be more opposite. This truck offers four high and four low modes with hill descent control, and that's about it. The positives are that this couldn't be more simple to use, and it makes the learning curve almost zero when out there on the trails. On the flip side, we would love to see a setting to change the speed on the hill descent control because it's just just too slow. Also, the main off-road switches are located way down low next to the driver's knee, which is pretty bad placement, especially when you need to make changes on the move. But all things considered, we were happy with how the Frontier handled itself off-road, noting that it holds its own against anything with a TRD badge. And speaking of TRD badge, the Nissan's appeal comes into focus when you compare its price to the direct competition. Entry-level S-Trim King Cab versions start at $27,850. $40 are just about $1,000 more expensive than the cheapest Tacoma. And the truck you see here in this video in crew cab form starts at $37,240 before option packages. That puts it south of a $44,000 TRD Pro Tacoma and the $39,000 Ford Ranger Lariat. Now you can nitpick the differences in what each truck offers depending on how you spec it, but the bottom line here is that the Nissan is a real compelling value when it's fully loaded with options. So we've spent lots of time today on and off-road with the new Frontier, coming away really impressed with what this truck can do. But one of our biggest questions is whether or not it can take a bigger bite out of the Tacoma's Goliath sales figures. I'm inclined to say yes at this point, but honestly, we won't know the answer to that until this guy goes on sale later on in September. For more on Motor One, follow us on social media at MotorOne.com. And as always, thanks for watching.